Wa alaikum assalam. Uh, my name is Nizam. Uh, I currently am uh, in charge of the Knowledge Center and um, Consulting uh, on Integrity uh, since uh, four years ago uh, in this Malaysian Institute of Integrity. Uh, this Integrity Institute was established in 2004 by the fifth Prime Minister, uh, Datuk Seri Abdullah Haji Ahmad Badawi then, now Tun, uh, to uh, harness the strength of the people in uh, building up the capacity of uh, their uh, inner selves against the onslaught of modern challenges, particularly in this country. Well, uh, first and foremost, the the focus then, as far back as 2004, was to sensitize the people of Malaysia on this terminology called integrity. It has been absent in the public discourse, not because it wasn't uh, important, but rather the, its manifest, manifestations have uh, been uh, diluted with so many shenanigans and scandals that we sorted, uh, particularly the private sector and uh, inherently within the public service, uh, not only in Malaysia but all over the world. Uh, when Tun Abdullah started his administration, he commissioned a team of academia uh, from University Kebangsaan and University Utara Malaysia, uh, which uh, did, uh, I think, about three or six months referendum exercises, yeah? uh, engaging focus group discussions and, and surveys. The one particular aspect of that survey that caught the attention of Tun Abdullah as the new Prime Minister then, and he discussed it in the cap his first cabinet meeting, was the fact that uh, out of one out of three of the student leaders in the universities admitted, <laughs> admitted that given uh, opportunity and power, they will corrupt themselves. That was telling, isn't it? Uh, I think the exact figure was 31.5% 30, of those uh, about 926 respondents of student leaders then. This was done 2002-2003 period. So that statement uh, took the attention uh, of Tun Abdullah such that he immediately in his first uh, press conference after the, his first cabinet meeting to uh, design the National Integrity Plan and to establish this Malaysian Institute of Integrity. So you can say the main uh, term of reference for this institute is to check this mindset that corruption is normal and given opportunities and power, it's natural for you to be corrupt. So that was, that was it. Yeah? Um, again, like I was sharing, three phases uh, now down the road. Each phase consists of five years uh, engagement plan, awareness, uh, engagement and uh, strengthening of institutions. My last uh, assessment through a one-year uh, survey that we did, this time around we commissioned uh, a a group of 40 academicians from University of Technology Malaysia uh, and uh, later on uh, their network of uh, academy to do uh, an assessment how how impactful our three phases uh, works uh, are. Yeah. Sad to say the impact is very minimal. Though the word or the terminology integrity is now a lot more uh, uh, friendly and people are using it for their own uh, perspective, but still the impact to check this corruption uh, mindset within the populace is very minimal. People are still taking it lackadaisical, it's, it's natural. And this time around, uh, through our survey, 
the institutions a willing participant in this whole shenanigans. Uh, that's very scary. Uh, so that's that's the background uh, as is what as it was, and uh, the status reality check now. Leadership, Dr. Hasna, leadership. Nothing more, nothing less but leadership. Uh, again, see, we do not personalize it as leader or leaders. The, the, the social uh, or the popular uh, assessment was it's personality based. Uh, to, to our own uh, assessment, it's not. It's leadership purely because it starts there and it creates this culture. Yeah, either a culture of mediocrity or permissiveness or, or um, uh, non-integrity or corruption, uh, if you can say that manner, as well as the, the tone of the talk is not um, being followed through with the right actions. You know? Uh, thank you. Um, in my in my 15 years here, I have, I have always been very cautious in trying to say that we have all the solutions. You know? Yet, at every moment and opportunity that I have, I will engage the nomuro uno, the first or topmost person in any organization or institution. Uh, for example. One of the popular institutions being uh, investigated, surveyed, uh, as well as assessed and then reported in the global uh, arena is the institution of police. Right? You check any literature, it all points out that of all institutions in any country is the police, which is uh, the most corrupt at least from the perception uh, perspective. Okay. Uh, 10 years ago, I had, this, I had to, to do something about it. So what I did was I went to the Inspector General uh, of Police, of police. And then there was the late uh, Tansri Bakri, and uh, discussed with him, now, can we uh, hold the bull by its horn? and do something about it. Because if you can cleanse the institution of police, at least you have a little chance to uh, give a signal to the rest of the world that, or in other sectors that we are serious about it. Yeah? Four IGPs later, after him, uh, number one, there is a dedicated department of uh, integrity and uh, compliance within the police, never been uh, established before. Yeah? And it's, it is headed by a, direct, a senior director. Number two, they managed in the police institution of Police Graduate Malaysia, they managed to contain that, uh, uh, the, the menace of corruption to a very, I think, less than 0 0.1 percentile of the whole of their performance record. That means they managed to arrest within yeah yeah uh, yeah uh, yet uh, th this is the sad part yet and i want to relate this to the finding of the first commission on integrity of public service uh, reported in 1955 two years before we get independence uh, that commission was headed by judge e.n taylor among others the member of which is in this is the, the peculiar writing of I N C H E in eh? <laughs> uh, Hussein On, who later on became our third prime minister. That commission's finding were two: one, uh, which is I want to relate to this police uh, progress. If the society wants corruption, the society gets corruption. So the police admitted that, in as much as they had, they tried to check within their control. Yet the society doesn't change at all. 
and the anecdotal cases of if you are uh, stopped by a traffic policeman, the first thing that the motorist will ask, can you settle, sir? You know? So the society is asking or offering. And because of the reality of our pay scale in this country, the, the constable is one of those uh, least paid civil servants, and they succumb to it. So on one hand, within an organization, there are serious and committed uh, efforts being made. But the societal pressure and uh, normality is not changing at all. So that's one, yeah, for example. The second um, uh, case I wish to share is among the professionals. And this is again uh, something to me, it's, it's already being uh, a cliche already. 